Um, so we've been hearing a lot this morning about hypertensive disorders of pregnancy. We know they're really common, around 8% of pregnant women, and that's about 70,000 women in the UK every year. So for many of these women, postpartum um, hypertension will persist postpartum, um, with gest gestational hypertension usually resolving within the first six weeks, but sometimes um, requiring a lifetime, lifelong treatment. In fact, a significant proportion of complications occur in the postpartum period in the first few days and weeks. And additionally, we know that the severity of hypertension during the six weeks postpartum period correlates really strongly with an increased cardiovascular risk. And we've been hearing a bit about that this morning. So it's a key time to have really good health care, in particular, optimal blood pressure control. Um, unfortunately, we also know from our research um, and, and that of others that postpartum care is often haphazard um, with different areas having perhaps slightly different care pathways, different conditions using slightly different thresholds for either readmission or the titration of, of medication. So we've done a lot of work around self-monitoring of blood pressure, both in the general population and, and also during pregnancy where it's been shown to be safe. Um, and because we know that the postpartum period is a really key time um, for intervention, we wondered if self-monitoring of blood pressure could improve blood pressure control at this time. So from the large amount of data we've got in the general population, we know that if you combine self-monitoring of blood pressure with self-management, where individuals can titrate their medication in line with home readings, um, with app support, um, with um, more frequent contact perhaps, every, this all results in better improvements in blood pressure control than just self-monitoring of blood pressure alone. So basically, the more you do to support the use of these readings, the better. So our interventions postpartum tend to involve self-monitoring of blood pressure where you're giving uh, a monitor, um, some titration of medication in line with sort of pre-agreed instructions, some, some clear information, and an automated way of kind of continuing to give in those readings and get, and get a response in line with that information. So often we use an app, it's a little diagram of that there. So our first pilot work in this area was in just 100 women across some regional sites, and they were randomised to either usual care or self-management of blood pressure. And this first chart shows the average blood pressure readings in both groups for the first six months. And we were delighted to see that for those who were self-managing their blood pressure, it was significantly lower. And not just in the first six weeks, um, but this difference remains for six months, even though you can see from the percentages written here that that's those who were taking medication. And most women had stopped taking medication by six months, but the, the effects of this intervention still remained. So we're interested to see if we could if this would happen longer term, and we followed up the participants three to four years later, and there was still a reduction. So we were delighted with this, these results and went on to do a slightly bigger trial. So a second larger trial was to see if this would be reproducible and to also investigate possible mechanisms behind the reductions we saw. This trial was of 200 women recruited in Oxfordshire and they self-monitored and self-managed their blood pressure again and took part in some vascular scans, which was an additional sort of part. So overall, we found that blood pressure was reduced in the intervention group, as you can see in the left. But also we could see from the scans that cardiovascular modeling had also improved in this group, which is a really exciting potential mechanism for how this might be working. So, this success has led us to be able to get um, some more funding from the NHR and we're running a programme of work around this um, postpartum management. Now, both the trials that I've just described were run by a very dedicated, motivated, initially obstetrician and then cardiologist locally. But we wanted to see if we could make this work at a bigger scale, more pragmatically and, and perhaps more involvement. So as part of this programme of work, we've gone on to develop and co-design intervention to be used pragmatically across the country uh, as part of a large multi-centre trial. We've done things like surveys of women and healthcare professionals, a large amount of qualitative work about understanding usual care and, and also around health equity. And Lisa is going to say a bit more about those this afternoon. But I will tell you a bit about the intervention development and co-design that we did with um, women and healthcare professionals. 
So we used the person-based approach and we worked with just nine PPI members, but we specifically targeted a group of individuals who were perhaps less likely to engage or to a group from a group that was less likely to engage with healthcare or health research. Um, and also a group of healthcare professionals as well. And what we came up with collaboratively looks like this. It's very simple. Um, so this is the app. Um, it uses symbols, simple wordings, um, and it's designed to have all the readings in a in a fairly easily accessible way. So it can be shown and shared to healthcare professionals at visits. So it provides simple automated guidance in line with that that we've provided in a leaflet that goes alongside. And this is what the intervention lef leaflet looks like. Again, we've tried to stick to quite simple languages um, using images and symbols to make things clear. And I'm delighted to say that we've started recruiting to the large trial, um, which is the SNAP trial. And we've currently recruited over 100 women across the UK. We're aiming for 600 or just over 600 to take part in the next year or so. Um, there's lots of more information about the study and the, the whole programme of work on our website if anyone's interested to follow that up more. But I will just say a very big thank you because, of course, I'm presenting on behalf of a very large team. This is just a few of them. I'm just going to mention Richard, who's the chief investigator of the, the SNAP programme. Jamie and Alex, who ran the smaller trials, um, we have lots of friendly obstetricians, some of them I'm sure you'll recognise, qualitative researchers, I'm going to call out Cynthia, who did um, the co-design work, and also APEC, a big thank you, they've supported this work all the way along. Um, they've been helping us all the way from applications, development, and all the way through to publications and, and um, writing guidelines and things, so big thank you. Catherine, that's really great. Uh, again, a big, um, it's great to see such a diversity of kind of tackling all the important problems. And, and you know, you didn't realise there's so many problems in preeclampsia, but people keep finding them. And of course, these are huge opportunities for the future. Um, I, I, I think, um, yeah, keep, keep going. And what a great team. Yeah.